Okay guys, I'm gonna go, oh, this video today is gonna to be going over my servers that I host. Some of you may have seen my YouTube video about the Geyser Connect and that my server is one of the servers at the top of the list. Well, I'm gonna go over how my lobby is set up and what my different, uh, you could call them game modes are. So, here we go. This is the name of the server. Here's a connection address. If you're on Java, you want to turn this to enabled because multiple servers have custom resource packs that you need to have to properly play the game. <clears throat> While Bedrock players can play these as well, they do miss out on a lot of textures. All right, when you first connect, you will see this over here. The look everyone is broadcast to everyone in the server, in the lobby saying, hey, you just connected, gives you a welcome, and kind of gives you a down and dirty on what to do. Over here on the right, you'll see the different servers or game modes that I have. As you can see, there's two, there's currently three of a capacity of 70 on this network. Two are on my Skyblock server, and there's me in the lobby. It's kind of late at night here, so I'm not really surprised that it's kind of quiet. Also, when you first log in for the first time, you'll be somewhere in this area around here, kind of like this, whatever, whatever. And over here, you'll see this. This is basically this chat, this text right here, in sign form, because I've been I've been getting reports that Bedrock players aren't necessarily seeing the text when they log in. <clears throat> Over here we have the castle. This is kind of the central part of the uh, lobby. Bottom floor, got some statues of the owner. That's me both myself, my Bedrock account, and that's my wife. She has physical access to the servers, though she doesn't really do much of anything with them. Then we have the server staff hallway right here. This is all the staff on the server, both their Bedrock and Java accounts. I only put the uh, Bedrock account if the Bedrock name is significantly different from their uh, Java name. Over here, devs associated with the server. The people in this room either have developed data packs or have had significant involvement in the development of data packs that might be running on the server. So you connect to the main survival server. This whole group over here all have to do with the Asphodel Meadows data pack. It adds a new dimension to the server. It's based on Greek mythology, the Asphodel Meadows. It's part of the afterlife. It's kind of like purgatory. Inker the second. I guess he changed his name or something because it's not showing his skin. But um, he developed the Aether data pack, which is based off an old, old mod. And over here, I've got some notable mentions or honorable mentions. Uh, in Dante, uh, he's in charge of one of the, uh, the Temptus Reborn projects. I hosted a server for him for a little bit till he got his own taken care of. Velvoxel Raptor, he's actually played on this server before. He's actually put in a few hours on this server in the past. Skelos has uh, kind of been playing a little bit here and there and um, he's kind of the main guy in charge of voxels discord now the survival now the survival server is this one right over here green beacon just and you teleport
Uh, this is my base. Um, I have a thing installed called Magic Sorting System. It uh, uses item frames for specific items to automatically sort stuff. And that's for what I was talking about with the Asphodel Meadows. This is what that dimension looks like. And it's got a custom mob. And these things are mean. You do not want to be in here unless you have some good armor. And unfortunately, bedrock players are unable to actually see the mobs, which is kind of a shame. And you can return back to the lobby at any time by simply doing server lobby. And that will bring you back to the beacon you were standing in front of. Most people are probably going to be interested in is the Skyblock server. This one I, I kind of got a kind of a little creative with. See this is island over here in the middle of the sky. It's for the Skyblock server kind of makes sense if you think about it. Don't have to think too hard. I've seen people trying to jump over to this bridge like this. Or like this it's really unnecessary I've actually got it set up so it's very easy to get over there come over here look looks like a bridge that's missing the base between some lamps just run across and you levitate And then you just step into the beacon. There's actually some of my staff are on this server right now. <laughs> so you would use is create my island name to get started once you connect to this server. After that, your most common commands will be IS to return to your island and IS missions. This will bring up both your player and your island missions. You have missions for doing stuff and you have missions for um, upgrading your island as however much. The next set of command, the next command you're going to be using a lot of will be upgrades. These allow you to upgrade things such as your cobble gen to potentially get better stuff. Doesn't make sense to me that redstone ore is before iron ore because you need iron to mine redstone, but that's just how the default settings of the plugin. And when you come back here, you, you can't get back across the bridge very easily. Just jump into the void and go back to spawn. Now over here, let's look at the red beacon. You notice it's titled Server Sticks. All those servers on the right, their colors match the beacon beams. Skyblock, Cyan, Survival, Green, Server Sticks, Red. Now, I call this the Server Sticks. I named it after the River Sticks, which is, uh, in mythology, it's a river that separated the land of living from the afterlife. Reason behind this is the primary survival server gets reset every major um, release of Minecraft. So, it started at 1.13, it got reset at 1.14, 
got reset again at 115. Wait, no. I did not reset it for 114. I got reset at 115 and then at 116 as well. So all those worlds from both Java and my bedrock servers, I actually have some actual just plain bedrock servers get moved here whenever the server gets reset. And then I have extra features added to make the um, worlds worth playing through again. Like additional ores, additional gear, more RPG heavy elements. And when you go to the server, it also has its own sub lobby. There we go. So when you come into the lobby, you actually start over here. You spawn in over here. Welcome to the server sticks. Where the living survival multiplayer worlds pass over to the afterlife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Each world spawn has a portal somewhere that allows you to return to this uh, to this lobby world. Minecraft 113 started in December 2018. Oh, I did reset for 114. Active for the entire 114 release run. Same thing for 115. This here comes to my base because I built it near spawn, and of course there's a simple portal here. Over here, these are bedrock worlds. I've only got one on here so far. This is a community center that was built on that server. And as you can see, the portal back is in the community center. And next time I do a video, I need to shut down my Discord because all that those message alerts are getting kind of annoying. <laughs> All right. Now over here on the side of the castle, you'll see this white beacon. And that lines up with on your server list there, Crafted World. Grim's Crafted World. This server is created entirely of wool with color specific drops. So you come in, as you can see, the entire world is all wool. Different colored, um, different color wool drops different colored, different items based on that color. Brown wool will drop you dirt, will drop you, uh, I think that's dark oak. Yeah, dark oak logs, everything's dark oak just to match the color of the wool. Uh, also, the grass and dirt blocks, if it's raining, have a chance to drop farmland. Because, you know, you need farmland for doing crops. And farmland and water are two of the few things, few blocks that do not get converted. That server is on 115 because I have been too busy with everything else to work on the data pack because the data pack is my own custom data pack. And if you look over at the um, server list again, what server is this? Or just read the sign. CMP, Creative Multiplayer. My my creative server I think is a little bit unique compared to most servers in that I don't have land claims and it is not a flat world. This is actually a regular Minecraft world, just a standard world that is completely creative. This is an open world creative server. As you can see here, if you are in Java, you can put a compass on your hotbar or your offhand and it will show you the um, 
your coordinates right there in the action bar so you don't have to go around with that on your display all day long. Also, please maintain at least 100 blocks from other builds. You may fence off a large area to claim if desired. Any new builds violating this rule may be removed. Now, obviously there's different builds that are within that range, but you know, let's if you're like, hey man, you mind if I build over here? And the other guy's like, sure, go right ahead. No big deal. But if somebody comes back onto the server and they're like, hey, somebody built something near my near my stuff, well, your stuff's gonna be removed. There is a rail line that runs all around this world. Granted, it's kind of pointless being in creative mode, but you know, if you just want to take a train ride, go for it. server left and if you look at the color what is it it's the aether server and yeah I gotta figure out how to get up here there we go I wanted to put it at the top because the aether is in mythology kind of like heaven or whatever um, if you're a bedrock player, this, this particular server makes heavy use of a resource pack. It completely changes the way everything looks. So bedrock players need to download and apply the textures before joining. So, as in before joining this server because you can't you can only apply bedrock textures before you join a game which is kind of dumb but that's how it's set up This is actually a lobby. The um, the Sather server has several dimensions in it. You will actually spawn over here. When you first join a server, you'll spawn here. You will find yourself in this little square right here, which will also have a little starter kit. You want to take all of this. It's yours. Take it. And there's still some remnants left over from a contest we had a while back. All you gotta do is go to any dimension. Once you come back through. Wait, what? Okay, that didn't work. Yes, we had somebody being an idiot. These are connected by barrier blocks, so you can just walk across instead of being an idiot like whoever did that what was. When you walk back through a portal, you'll find yourself in the lobby. This lobby is just here to allow you to uh, easily get between dimensions and there's a few ender chests scattered about so you can store stuff and if you decide to be cavalier and jump off well you'll just find yourself back up here so you don't really have to worry about dying unless you manage to find one of the very few areas where you can actually hit something and die
Oh, come on. Why do you gotta load the texture packs three times, you stupid game? So, yep. That's the overview of this server. <laughs> So now you guys know what's up with this server, what things are, and how to get around if you watch this video. And if you really want to play this on Bedrock, you can. Just keep in mind that um, custom textures don't for items do not work. So you want to read your item descriptions. Your item description being that little thing right there. You want to read your lore because it might be something special. And in particular on like the server sticks, flowers will actually have special properties. So you just need to be wary of that. All right, well, that's it for this video.